Namaste. Very simple topic for today. What size of game are you playing? If you're like most people, then your game is maybe just to get through the week. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid going to school, my game was just to get through the day. <laughs> so, as we mature, hopefully, our game gets bigger and bigger. Our horizon goes farther and farther out. And we get more and more strategic view of our life, our activities, our intentions, and so on. But how many people are playing a game that goes beyond the death of this body, that goes to, into the next life. How many people are playing this uh, game that includes dropping this body and getting a new one? See, a, a game has to have a goal. Uh, like in basketball, you have to put the ball into the basket. Or in football, you have to get into the end zone or into the, if, if you're playing European football, you have to get it into the cage. Huh? That's the goal. And the way you measure your success in the game is by how many goals you score. So life is also a game in the sense that it has or should have measurable goals. See, now the problem is most people today measure their life success by money. How much money do I have today? <laughs> and I will get more tomorrow by my plans. Huh? But this is described in Bhagavad Gita as a demoniac mentality. Huh? So much do I have today, and I will gain more and more by my plans. Huh? Why? Because this is ego. This is raw, naked ambition and ego. Me, 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 number one. Huh? And we see this, especially in the elites today. A friend of mine was telling me, a friend who lives in Delhi, that some bigwig, some elite rich person came in by plane and was, of course, stamped, you know, 14-day uh, quarantine. They stamp it right on your arm, boom, like, just like this. <laughs> but it doesn't, it's indelible. <laughs> it takes a month to wash off or something. So what did he do? He immediately broke quarantine and went partying with his friends. And now, as a result, the whole legislature of India is in lockdown. <laughs> you see, because this rascal thinks the rules don't apply to him. So actually there was a study done, a very interesting study, where some people, those test subjects, were put in a situation where they had the opportunity to cheat. And a very strong statistical correlation, close to one, huh, was found. Ready for this? You probably know where I'm going already, huh? The richer the person, the more inclination they had to cheat. To do the wrong thing when they thought nobody was looking. But of course, in the experiment, 
they were under observation. <laughs> so these are the people who are rich and powerful. They are the cheaters. They are the people who think rules don't apply to them. Uh, they are the people who think they can get away with anything. And for the most part, they do. Huh? Until they get that federal indictment. <laughs> you know, it's sad to see all the infighting going on in the so-called upper crust, you know. The, uh, the elites, the rich people, the powerful people. How they're always at each other's throats. Huh? Like Game of Thrones, right? Actually, I've never watched it, but I've read about it. <laughs> Here are these people. They have everything. Money, power, uh, you know, beautiful mate, and so on, right? Well, what are they doing? They're fighting each other like cats and dogs. And this is also seen today in so-called diplomacy. It's not very diplomatic, really. Uh, there's not much honor associated with it. It's a pack of lies. But still they go on with the pretense, right? That actually, I, I'm not going to stab you in the back the minute you tur turn away. <laughs> I'm pretending to be your friend and be nice to you, but actually I'm your competitor and I'm a cutthroat rascal. This is diplomacy. This is politics today because the morality or the rules of the game are not followed by the elite. Now, it wasn't always this way. Back in the Vedic days, the kings were the most moral. Huh? Read Mahabharata. If for nothing else than to study the character of King Yudhishthir, King Yudhishthir is just the most amazing, most honorable, most honest king. And his idea of being a king is to serve the citizens, which of course is the Vedic principle. So if these people really are serving the citizens, you know, they wouldn't have dismantled the pandemic response team just before a major pandemic. See, this rascaldom is going on at the highest levels of our society today. Is it any wonder it's falling apart? Is it any wonder, I think, astrologically, this year is turning out to be one of the most incredibly uh, stressful years in history? Why? Because the people at the very top have lost all principles of morality. They're playing the game only to win in this life. You see? But what happens if you change your perspective? What happens if you start playing the game so that you win in the next life? Huh? I've seen a bumper sticker that says, the one who dies with the most toys wins. Well, what's the use if he has the most toys if in the next life he becomes a dog? You know, I don't get where these people are coming from. Well, yeah, I, actually I do. They're ignorant. They're ignorant. They're materialists. They're so-called rationalists. They have no idea that there's anything after the death of this body. Because they don't know who they are. Huh? We are not these meat bags. <laughs> we are not these sacks of flesh and bones. We are something more than that, more subtle than that. Huh? At the very least, we are energy, the energy of life, energy of consciousness. And at, at the most, we are pure consciousness without any object. Now, this is the highest level of self-realization, which only a few people reach. But any pious person, any person of any religious or philosophical 
class can make for themselves a better birth in the next life. That's just, that's easy. Huh? All you have to do is believe in God and pay God some kind of service. Huh? Even if it's insincere, go to the temple, bow down, pray, you know? In the West, now in Christianity, they don't even bow down anymore. <laughs> They just show up and sit in these comfortable pews, you know. Maybe they kneel, you know. That's about, the, that's about as far as they'll go. <laughs> but the Christian monks, now the Christian monks used to do prostrations. And if you follow all the rules of prostrations, and, you know, just try doing a hundred of those, you feel like you had a real workout. So this type of worship is known as devotional service, bhakti, uh, where you sacrifice something in this life for well-being in the next. So at the minimum, you can go to the heavenly planets. You can go to Swarga. You can go to the, the planets of the demigods where there's all kinds of enjoyment. But better than that is to go to the planets of the sages uh, or to go to the highest planet, the Brahmaloka. And there you can live for the rest of the duration of this universe. And at the end, then you go to Brahman. Now, I know a lot of people are skeptical. Huh? But even in this life, if you're a good person, if you follow the rules, if you don't harm others, if you don't uh, harm animals, uh, especially poor innocent animals. People just kill them wantonly, you know, just for a little taste of meat. Actually, meat is disgusting. And this is one of the things that will for sure get you an animal birth in your next life, is to eat meat. But if you take a little austerity, become a vegetarian, I mean, that alone will get you into the heavenly planets at the time of death. Because why? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I love to quote this verse, yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tyajatante kalevaram kam kam me vaiti tonteya sadatad bhava bhavita. That whatever you think of at the time of death, that is the state of being you will attain in the next life. So what do you think of at the time of death? You think of all the activities of this life all rolled into a very compressed seed, which becomes the seed of the next body. So what we do every day, what we think, what we say, the plans we make, the actions we take, all of these become compressed in memory, huh? and they become attitudes. Who is it, some British guy, said, thoughts become words, words become attitudes, attitudes become habits, habits become our character, and our character becomes our destiny. See, so every thought, every word, every act, in the end, totals up to our final score, huh? if we're playing life as a game. And depending on that score, that's how we qualify for the next body. See, if we have a score that's below a certain amount, oh, sorry, <laughs> you don't even get a human birth. Or if you're in the middle somewhere, you'll get a human birth, but just an ordinary one. It's when you start to get up in the high 90s, you know, <laughs> really high scores, that you start to qualify for higher births, you know, as a deva, or devi, or even better, as a sage beyond the heavenly planets. And to do that, you have to do something special, like teach other people enlightenment. Hmm? That's why I'm doing this. I'll be honest with you, it's completely selfish. 
I don't care whether anybody listens or not. <laughs> I mean, I care in the sense that I would like my efforts to be uh, fruitful and help a lot of people. That's my intention. But in fact, it doesn't make much difference for me whether I'm successful or not. That's why I can keep going, even though I only get, you know, a paltry number of views, you know, compared to some, some idiot movie star posting about the, you know, whatever nonsense they're into today. But that doesn't deter me because the goal that I'm shooting for in this game is much higher. Not mere popularity in a world of idiots, uh -huh. but I want the highest, best karma, the highest, best destination for myself in the next life. And by following our program, looking at our courses, and understanding this philosophy, so can you. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.